gospel reading for today is Mark chapter 4, 26 through 34. Jesus said, this is what God's kingdom is like. It's as though someone scatters seed on the ground and sleeps and wakes night and day. The seed sprouts and grows, but the farmer doesn't know. The earth produces crops all by itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain. Whenever the crop is ready, the farmer goes out to cut the grain because it's harvest time. He continued, what's a good image for God's kingdom? What parable can I use to explain it? Consider a mustard seed. When it's scattered on the ground, it's the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But when it's planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all vegetable plants. It produces a large branch that the birds in the sky are able to nest in its shade. With many such parables, he continued to give them the word as much as they were able to hear. He spoke to them only in parables. Then he explained everything to his disciples when he was alone with them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Well, an elderly pastor was searching his closet for a tie before one Sunday morning. In the back of his closet, he found a box containing three eggs and one hundred one dollar bills. He called his wife into the closet about this box and all of its contents. And embarrassed, she admitted of having hidden the box for nearly 30 years of their marriage. Disappointed and hurt, the pastor asked her why. Well, the wife replied that she hadn't wanted to hurt his feelings. He asked how the box could hurt his feelings. And she said that every time during their marriage that he delivered a poor sermon, she placed an egg into the box. Well, that pastor felt that three poor sermons in 30 years was certainly nothing to feel bad about. So he asked, What's the hundred dollars for? She replied, well, every time I get a dozen eggs, I sold them to my neighbor for a dollar. <laughs> and yes, um, Cindy does about the same type of thing. And about five years, we can retire. <laughs> Kingdom of God. That phrase is something we just don't use in this nation. Americans do not like to talk about kingdoms. We don't understand the concept, and rightfully so, because we kicked out England after we declared our independence and won the Revolutionary War. Ever since then, the United States has had the phrase, e pluribus unum, or out of many, one. We are united by choice through a constitution and as a single entity, we are made up of individual sovereign states who agree to work together for a common cause. And I believe because of our individualistic mindset that we tend to shy away from the phrase kingdom of God. Let's look at our own denomination. The United Methodist Church is a connection of individual churches United by districts, annual conferences, jurisdictional conferences, and ultimately a general conference, which is our legislative authority for the entire denomination and the only voice that officially speaks for our denomination. We as individual churches work together for a common good. So our mission statement for the entire denomination is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And the United Methodist Church does not have a worldly kingdom mindset because we are not ruled by a single person. We're not ruled by a king or a queen or a pope or a single bishop who tells us how to worship. No one tells us what to do on our missions. No one tells us how much money we have to give to the church. No one tells us what it is to be like a United Methodist. So, what unifies us as United Methodist, other than our name, United Methodist? Our main unity 
is under the headship of our Trinitarian God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the Trinitarian headship unites us as a church universal. All Orthodox denominations worship and act under the authority of our Trinitarian God. The only time we break out into our distinctives is when we get into our own individual churches or denominations. And the distinctive of the United Methodist Church is our book of discipline, which helps guide us with our doctrine, our theology, and church governance, or at the general, the jurisdictional, annual, and the local levels. So why am I telling you all this based upon the scriptures I read today? Well, I tell you all this because it's important to understand what we believe, why we believe a certain way, and how we should live in unity, not just as United Methodists, but as disciples of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, as the church universal. I also tell you this because although we are proud Americans, and I would not change my country for any other in the world. We cannot let our American identity dictate what we choose to believe or not to believe as we read the Holy Scriptures. See, Americans are not kingdom-minded people. But Jesus talked about the kingdom of God a whole bunch throughout his entire ministry. And as we read in our gospel lesson today, Jesus told many parables about the kingdom of God. He described the kingdom of God as a here and now reality and eventually the only kingdom that will exist under the headship of one. And that's our Trinitarian God. You see, earthly kingdoms, they come and they go. There have been many earthly kingdoms that have come and ushered into great power and authority only to fizzle out and just make up a remnant of their once greatness. Now we see the kingdom of Israel being shattered by Nebuchadnezzar by the kingdom of Babylon in Ezekiel 17. We read about the kingdom of Egypt in, in Ezekiel 31 with its coming defeat by the kingdom of Babylon. And we read about the kingdom of Babylon under the headship of Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel 4 and see the king is removed from the throne by God and to live a mentally unstable life among the wild beasts of the field and then being restored to the throne by God. The kingdom of Babylon was ultimately defeated by another kingdom, kingdom of Persia and King Cyrus. Our history lessons that we grew up with in school, and as we grow older, history becomes reality. But our history lessons tell us of the Roman Empire, how it was probably the greatest empire or kingdom that lasted throughout the entire world. But it broke up because it overextended itself, and they thought they were more powerful than God himself. In recent history, we have witnessed the kingdoms of England, Japan, Italy, Germany, France, Russia, and many more fizzle to a form of their one-time greatness. The kingdoms of this world will fade and fizzle no matter how powerful, no matter how blessed, no matter how influential their leader is because power corrupts. And absolute power corrupts absolutely, if there's humans involved. I believe we are witnessing a change, a shift, a shaking of the foundations of the United States of America. The United States is said to be an exceptional nation because of all of our blessings. This country has experienced so much growth, so much honor and so much power throughout the world that we've become the superpower. Our language has become the language. Our dollar has become the monetary system. It still is 
throughout the entire world. But there's a change going on. There's some type of shifting in the air. And whether it's the change of culture, whether it's the reliance upon scientific discovery, the advancement of technology, the extensive freedoms that every person in this country has as an inalienable right because we fought for it. Or maybe the change is coming because the protective hand of God is slowly moving away from us. I think we can all say before our very eyes, we are witnessing some type of change in our nation. And not just our nation, but throughout the entire world. We don't want to think of our nation as a kingdom. But I do have to tell you, it fits the mold. It absolutely fits the mold. We have, we have and we use different terminologies to describe the United States. But without a doubt, we are a kingdom that's in decline. Kingdoms rise. Kingdoms fall based upon the will of God. And we can't fully predict what is going to happen to our nation in the future. Hopefully, we pray for revival. Hopefully, God's hand of protection will not be released. Hopefully, it will stay over us. Hopefully, it will keep blessing us so that we can be the beacon of light for the entire world and share the gospel of Christ to those who need it instead of receiving so many missionaries from other countries. Hopefully our nation can remain great, can stay great, can get greater, but we can't predict the future. The only thing that we can predict is that our nation will not last forever, at least at the full power that we are currently at, or at least once had. But I have to tell you, even though there's temporary kingdoms, even though we live in the most powerful nation in the world, it's still temporary. And we see how shaky the balance can be. Threats of shutting down the government shakes the financial realm to the world all the way to the ground. And it's not just us. If one country across the seas who's very influential, maybe some brown and some black stuff underneath the ground and they raise heck, we again see our foundation start to shake a little bit because we're solely not sovereign by ourselves. We're so connected with the world. But it's shaky and things are changing. But the good news is, this is not the only kingdom that we're a part of. The good news is, is that the kingdom of the United States may fall someday, but the kingdom of God Almighty will remain intact forever. That's the good news that we have. There's one kingdom that has always been in existence, has had messengers to plant seeds, has had living waters to, and fertile ground to grow the seeds, and has continued to produce a crop that will one day reach its full harvest. This kingdom has never had a need for a military because no kingdom can come against it. This kingdom has never took land by force because it's scattered throughout the entire universe. This kingdom has never lied to its citizens to hold on to power because power and authority is given to all who are part of this kingdom. This kingdom is the only kingdom that survived the course of time and is just as influential as it has always been. This kingdom has an eternal king who sits on the throne and rules justly throughout his entire kingdom because all people are to come to himself and be free and be protected and not be afraid that anyone else can shatter the walls of this kingdom. But this kingdom, my brothers and sisters, is the kingdom of God. 
And it is ruled and reigned by the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who sits on the throne, who is never going to be dethroned, who is never going to wield so much power that we want to kick him out of office. This kingdom of God is supposed to be in our hearts. It's supposed to be in our minds. We are supposed to utilize this kingdom in order to change our own nation. This, my fellow Disciples of Christ is who we are. At least it's supposed to be who we are. We're supposed to have our minds changed and accept that we are indeed kingdom people. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and received forgiveness for your sins, then you are a new creation and you live and you rule and yes, you reign in the kingdom of God. There's no such thing as an American Christian. No such thing as a British Christian. No such thing as a Canadian Christian, a Mexican Christian, Russian Christian in the kingdom of God. The only identity that we have in the eternal kingdom of God is redeemed child of the Father, sibling of the Lord Jesus Christ, and temple of the Holy Spirit. We are not labeled when we enter the kingdom of God. The only thing that we are called is saved, redeemed, my beloved child. That's it. And I know you've heard throughout your entire life, when you go to heaven, there's not going to be a Methodist section. There's not going to be a Catholic section. There's not going to be a Baptist section. There's going to be a Christian section. There's going to be a son and daughter section. There's going to be a unity that is far beyond any unity this nation has ever seen. There's going to be a unity far beyond any unity this denomination has ever seen. There's going to be more unity between our father and us than there is between my earthly father and me. We are going to have such a tight unity when we enter the fullness of the kingdom of God that nothing will ever stand between us. My brothers and sisters, even though we are United Methodists living in the United States of America, we must live like kingdom people. We must talk like kingdom people. Why? Because we are kingdom people. We are kingdom people and we should claim the kingdom of God that will never end, never fail, never crumble, never oppress you, never set you off to the side and say you're not worthy enough, never give you disease, never lie to you, but will give you the rule and reign to share in the kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This, my friends, is the kingdom that we live in. Not the United States of America, but the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God and those who live it can make the United States of America better. The kingdom of God can make England better, can make Russia better, can make Africa as a whole better. Or Latin America or South America, whatever it is. If the kingdom of God is in there through the individual heirs, of the kingdom of God, that should be our identity. Why do you think we fight so much throughout the world? Because we claim we are better than you. We have more influence than you. Our dollar bill is better than your franc or your euro, whatever it is. Our military is more powerful than yours. Well, we know that. But should we identify with and make that our being, or should we say, I am a Christian first and foremost. My loyalty is to God and God alone, and then everything else is secondary. We are kingdom people, whether we like the language or not, and most Americans don't. But we are a kingdom in this nation that's in decline, but our kingdom that we are a part of will never see any decay. Jesus gave us parables today. 
And they said, this is like the kingdom of God. It grows and we don't even know it's growing. And it's so influential, yet so small at times, that the branches go beyond our grasp and we will have shield and covering and shade and even produce fruit for everyone who is a part of this kingdom. My friends, sometimes we have to change our mindset and say, yes, I am a heavenly kingdom person, even though the earth is not going to last forever. Scripture is very clear on that. But our kingdom is no end. So use the kingdom of God as your own, for it is, and live like it. Live like princes and princesses. Live like heirs of Jesus Christ. Live like you have the authority and the seal of our Father because the Holy Spirit has already sealed you for your day of redemption. Let's live like kingdom people, shall we? Amen. Gracious God. We thank you for Jesus and his ministry here on earth. We thank you, Lord, that we are part of a kingdom that will never fail. We thank you, Lord, that you give us the knowledge to stand firm upon what Jesus did for us, upon the authority and power that the Holy Spirit gives us, and upon the name of our Heavenly Father. We stand in line with that family of God, with that kingdom of God, and with that authority that comes through our God. Bless every nation on this earth, O oh Lord. We lift them up. We lift up our own. For there is some type of shift going on. There's pain. There's injustice. There's a lack of morality. And it's because we've turned away from you. In many areas of our life. So Father, we pray for revival. We pray for a mindset that we can look towards you and say, do this and we will just do it. And when you say, no, not yet, we won't argue with you. We'll say, okay, we are of your kingdom, O Lord. Help us to understand that. Help this nation build it up once again. Make it stronger. Make it better. Allow for the, the name of Jesus Christ to be lifted up off every single lip. And those who refuse to say it, Lord, change their hearts. From our elected leaders to our appointed leaders, all the way throughout the entire country to the basic citizen that we are. Cleanse us, O oh Lord. Forgive us of our sin. And allow for the mission of our own church be the mission of our nation to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the entire world. Help us be kingdom-minded people, O oh Lord. And we pray this in Jesus, our Savior, and stand before your throne as brothers and sisters, and able to pray the united prayer that you taught all of your children. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 